Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It's safe to say we are going to have one or two spoilers in this one. So if you don't want to hear anything about 10.1, I would look away now because we are going in hard. Oh my. Now 10.1 is currently available on PTR for testing. It is, it should be said, in a very early state. We don't have things like the campaign quests or side quests, things like that, which, to be honest, I'm okay with. I'm far more interested in testing out the new systems and how they're going to work. I'll enjoy the story on my main once this actually hits retail. But what do we have? Well, we have, of course, the new zone, the Zaralect Cavern. This is located underground, as you would expect, with the entrance being just outside of Voldraken, as if you are heading to the plains with the opening of this cavern, Farax forces have pushed out, creating camps in the Azure Span and within the plains itself. Now my guess is these will be replacing the storming events so that you'll be able to get new Season 2 items which will lead into the Flightstone system which is currently available. This is one that is going to need a video all on its own. It's huge, it's vast and yeah, I think it's going to be confusing for many. So Valor is going the way of the Dodo and disappearing, instead to be replaced with Flightstones and Crests. Now everything you're going to do outside of PvP will give you Flightstones. And all Season 2 gear, and I mean all, within reason, will be upgradable. Yeah, even stuff you get from rares out in the world. Now, the level of content the gear drops from determines its starting level of power. So an item from the world, maybe, let's say it's I level 376, would be graded as Explorer level. That is the base entrance level. This can be upgraded all the way to 398. But that item doesn't have to stay at Explorer Grade. It can start leveling it up, which means it's going to give you a higher item level. For this, we are going to need the Crests. Now, for start with, we need the Welpling Crest. This is basically equal to LFR content. We can upgrade then our Explorer Gear into Adventure Gear using this Crest. This allows us to then upgrade that item all the way to 411 and so on. Now four crests we can earn in total. The Whelp, as I mentioned before, is LFR level. We have Drake, which is equal to normal raid difficulty. We have Worm, which is heroic. And finally, we have Aspects, which is the mythic level. Once you reach basic mythic level, you are unable to progress further. You would literally have to do mythic content to get any of the higher level gear. Now one nice aspect of this system it should one character in your account have a higher item level piece of gear, all of your alts will benefit from your character having that high item level. So let's say you had a chest piece on your main that is eye level 431. On your main, if you happen to get a lower level chest, and you thought, ooh, actually the stats are better, but obviously the item level is rubbish, doesn't matter. You can use your flight stones and no crest, because you already have a higher item level, to boost that item up to your current piece of gear. On your alts, they will share this. Again, they will only need to use half of the flight stones to upgrade this piece of gear, but they will have to invest in the crest. Yeah, as I say, this definitely needs a video all of its own. I read through Blizzard's long post and it's like, okay, yep. This is going to need some explaining. Now, speaking of explaining, we have a ton of class changes. As always, we have a major patch, and I won't be covering these. There are a ton of great class specialists out there, and it's worth going over and hearing what they have to say, and what the theory crafters are coming up with in terms of what's going to be good or bad for your particular spec and class going into 10.1. I will say, I play a DK, and currently we're not showing us having any changes. Speaking of no changes for DK, interrupts. We have some changes, which I can't remember the last time we had changes to interrupts. This specifically is for the duration of the interrupt. What the hell does interrupt duration mean, I hear some of you say. Well, when you interrupt a target, they are locked out of casting that spell for several seconds. So let's say we have a wizard, an NPC that's casting three spells. They have a fireball, then they'll cast a shield, and then they'll do blizzard. You want to interrupt the shield because you do not want them protecting themselves or others. You want them to die fast. So you interrupt it. 
and depending on your class, that NPC will be unable to cast the shield spell for X number of seconds, meaning they'll just skip on to the next one. A rule of thumb here is the longer the cooldown of your interrupt, the longer the interrupt duration is going to be for that particular mob or player. For instance, a shaman has a very, very fast cooldown on their interrupt. So their interrupt duration is only around three seconds. But a mage has a much longer interrupt cooldown, so their interrupt duration is six seconds. Now this change is going to be game wide, meaning it will affect PvP and PvE. I would imagine this will most likely be felt worst in PvP. But there are times where this may potentially affect us with various mobs in PvE. Going forward, Blizzard have said they will keep this change in mind when considering seasonal dungeons, etc. Speaking of PvP, there are a ton of changes, and I will again leave this to people who have far more knowledge about PvP. And let's be fair, we already have a ton of stuff to be talking about. <gasps> Speaking of which, let's get on <sighs> to professions. Now remember we spoke about those crests being able to upgrade our gear? Well, they are back this time to be used in upgrading crafted items. You'll need to hand your crest over to an enchanter, and they will use their wizardy magic stuff. I don't know what enchanters do. They just kind of throw some powder and gems and crystals and stuff, and it enchants. There you go. Basically what's going to happen is you will hand over your crest, they will do some of their enchanting voodoo on it, and you will then gain the enchanted variant of that crest, which will be able to upgrade your crafted items. Fingers crossed the recipe for this is just going to be something we can purchase from a vendor, so that we don't have the lariat all over again. Ugh. Speaking of the lariat, it has been nerfed, tweaked? whatever you want to call it. The embellishment basically has been changed. The buff duration is being reduced to 5 seconds from 12, increasing by 1 second per elemental gem equipped. Basically what this means, coming from Blizzard, is that the start of the season, you're going to have less gems, which means the Lariat is going to perform far poorer than it does now. But as your gear gets better, as you start being able to socket more gems, then, this is rapidly going to rise back up in power. No word on whether the recipe is going to be easier to get, but not our problem, for we have it now, thank God. Speaking of recipe plans being a pain to get, we have a lot of new items that are being added into professions. Currently, on 10.1 PTR, we have no idea where these are going to come from. Blizzard is still working that out. Right now, we simply go up to a vendor and we can learn all sorts of new funky things. So we will, myself and Cuddles, be keeping a very close eye on where these are going to come from because we do not need, as I've said multiple times for professions, another lariat where something that's going to be particularly powerful is going to come from a really awkward place and uh, yeah, people are going to miss out, which is not good. It's not what we want. And finally, finally, we have the next phase in the UI upgrades with more features being added to edit mode. We have cast bar changes, mini map adjustments, raid frame, blah, 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 easy for me to say, raid frame buffs, added options to disable chat, because you know, why would you want to be able to talk to people in an MMO? Yeah. And that's it. I don't think anything else is coming to 10.1. Um... <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess, of course, there is that. Cross-faction guilds are finally becoming a thing. I moaned about this so much when we had cross-faction parties being a thing, but they never brought guilds in. It seemed to me to be pointless to have cross-faction parties doing dungeons and not the ability to have cross-faction guilds. Well now, they've finally gone and done it, and we can team up with our alliance or horde comrades, whatever you may be. Your guild will always represent the faction of the guild leader. They will be able to share guild chat with each other, and guild repairs and so on and so forth. Not sure how it's going to work with things like guild mounts. The Horde currently have the Scorpion mount and the Alliance have the Lion. So will a Alliance player in a Horde guild have the Scorpion and vice versa? We don't know. This is literally brand new 
coming to PTR now, so there is a lot for us to find out and a lot to be worked out. I just hope, in the process of Blizzard doing this, they cast their gaze upon guilds and give them some love. They should be the cornerstone of any MMO, a place where players can come together with a similar mindset, a similar desire and drive in the game, and just enjoy themselves and just feel safe to do whatever it is they want to do within their guild. Instead, Blizzard have just fed the pug world and that has only divided and fractured the player base more and more, rather than bring us together, which is what it should do. I don't want to see a return to the cesspool getter guilds, they are worse than having nothing. But for those players that are trying their best right now to make guilds work, whether they're the leadership or whether they're members, they're doing their best to create a welcoming home for everyone, there needs to be more help on Blizzard's side to keep this thing going. If you wonder why M plus numbers might be dropping or raid numbers might be dropping, it can be directly linked back to the fact that more and more we're feeding into the pug world and moving away from a social guild based game. But that is something that's going to take a lot longer than 10.1 to rectify. Or of course you could just let players disable chat and pretend it's a solo game. Whatever works for you I guess Blizzard. But what do you all think? Whew, what do you all think regards to what's coming in 10.1? Are you excited? Are you already bored? Are you simply confused? Or are you just waiting to see what it actually looks like when it finally hits live? I for one, to be honest, I'm excited. There's a lot of really good stuff here. I like the fact that Blizzard's just trying new things. The currency sounds confusing right now, but I think it's actually been really good for the game going forward, with all content being available and relevant and good for all aspects of players. Whether you're a very top-end Mythic Raider, whether you are someone that's just doing M+, casually, just enjoying the game, or whether you're somebody that's down the bottom that just likes doing world quests and isn't interested in all that end game stuff. Everybody will have an aspect that they can keep upgrading, keep progressing in their own little power bracket. That's great. But from me, thank you for watching. Stay safe and I'll catch you all in the next video. Ladies, everyone.